Hello, Dr. J here. We're going to do more trigonometric identities, but this time I'm going to add some applications to communication systems just in a very light way, and I'll talk about it more rigorously in later videos. The bottom line I want you to get from this video is that the product between two sinusoids of two different frequencies results in the sum and difference of their frequencies. What I'll do is I'll prove, let's say, the multiplication between these two sinusoids. The C here, the subscript C, stands for like a carrier frequency, that, so that could be like a radio station. And the subscript M here for this cosine represents the message. And I'll illustrate this visually, what this means. Here, what we said was the multiplication of two sinusoids results in the sum of the frequencies and the difference shown here and here. So these are for the two cosines. Here we have a cosine, as same for the carrier, and then a sine for the message. Again, however, it results in two sum and difference frequencies, but this time we have a sine here and a sine here. And then finally, this combination is that when we multiply two sines together, again, one associated with the carrier and the other is associated with the message, we get the sum and difference frequencies here is the sum and here's is the difference and note we have a minus sign but all this can be proven very easily using Euler's identities so let's show you in those previous trigonometric identities that this has a useful application say we want to transmit a voice signal say at 3 kilohertz and for efficient transmission and reception the antenna size should be in the order of magnitude of the wavelength and we have this relationship from physics. The wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by frequency. And mathematically, that's lambda is the wavelength, c is the speed of light, f is the frequency. So if I substitute the speed of light for 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second and 3 kilohertz for 3 times 10 to the 3rd hertz, so this gives us a 100,000 meter size antenna in order to transmit this 3 kilohertz signal. So that's the antenna size. If we want to reduce the antenna size significantly, we need to transmit at a higher frequency. So let's say we want to transmit at AM, which say is about 1,000 kilohertz or 1 megahertz. That's about the mid-range of the AM radio stations. And therefore, this will decrease this by 1,000 times which still gives us a pretty good size antenna of 10,000, I mean 10 meters. And so we can make that up with either higher transmitter power and a more efficient uh, amplifier at the receiver end. So let me give you a visual of the trigonometric identities that I just discussed and apply it toward communication systems. Instead of multiplying it with a, one of these sinusoids, sine or cosine, we'll just multiply it generically by m of t. So we're multiplying two functions. And basically what we're doing is that in order for the antenna size to be small, we want to shift our information where the carrier frequency is at and omega c represents some radio station frequency. So what we essentially saying mathematically, and again I'll show this in later videos using other concepts, but here for now I just want to show visually what this multiplication implies. So basically what we have is now that we shifted the information centered at the origin here, so there's a low uh, pass signal, and here we're trying to transmit at the carrier frequency, which are now bandpass signals. But here the information now is centered at the carrier frequency. Here's what I mean. So let's say I have the horizontal axis omega, and the vertical axis is what's describing as m omega. You can think of this as the Fourier transform of our message signal. And there we're going to, which I'll define Fourier transfers, transform in the later videos and provide more examples. But for now, here's what it hap here's what this operation of multiplying these two signals together. Okay? So what it does is just basically shifts this information centered at the origin and moves it, that information or splits that information centered at omega c and at omega 
omega c. And the reason why we have omega c, negative omega c is when we describe this in terms of the Fourier transform, it involves complex exponentials. So that's why you have a positive and negative frequency. Also, we have to note that the amplitude that we started off with was 1, but when we multiply it by cosine omega c of t, it splits in half. Now we're going to take our trigonometric identities, the three of them that I shown earlier, uh, using Euler's formula. So we'll start off with a cosine omega c of t, defined by this Euler's formula. And then the cosine omega m of t, which is our message, by this corresponding Euler's formula. And we're going to multiply these two trig functions, cosine omega c t and cosine omega m of t and substitute their corresponding formulas on the right side, as shown here. Now we just simply perform algebra. Since they all have a common base in the, in the numerator, we're just going to do algebraic manipulation in the exponents. So this first term here is a result of multiplying this term and this term. So we add the positive omega c and the positive omega m and factor appropriately. I'm keeping the 2 here because we're going to get a form of this relationship and then we can replace it with the corresponding cosine or sine as whatever the case may be. The second term right here shown here where we have minus j omega c plus omega m quantity times t is a result of multiplying this term and this term. The third term is a result of multiplying this e j to the omega c t by this term here e to the minus j omega m of t. And we get this third term in this equation. Then finally we have this fourth term which is a negative j quantity omega c minus omega m of t. This last term is a result of multiplying this term by this term. So our minus j omega c is shown here and this minus minus is due to the positive j omega m of t here. Now we take a look at the first two terms and you can see it follows the form of our cosine function. So the argument of, for our cosine definition is omega c plus omega m quantity multiplied by the t. And we weigh it by one half due to this two here and this two here. Similarly, the last two terms is a result of our argument having cosine omega c minus omega m t, so applying again the cosine definition, we have omega c minus omega m, taking this quantity and multiply it by t. So you can see here the multiplication of these two functions with different frequencies results in the sum and difference frequencies. And this is our trig identity. We're going to do this similar for the next two identities. It follows the same process and it all involves this algebra and recognizing the definition of the cosine and sine terms. On the next video I'll cover these two identities but meanwhile while I produce these two videos I suggest you try proving these identities using Euler's formula. Thanks for watching. Signing off is Dr. J.